Hello, I'm Haslinda Amin, anchor with Limbic Television. It's so almost two years into the pandemic and women have made important gains in representation, especially in senior leadership. But according to McKinsey, the pandemic continues to take a toll. Women are now significantly more burnt out and increasingly more so than men. And for those in tech, women have borne the brunt of job losses, which is accelerating an already big problem given that they account for only a quarter of tech-related jobs. Let's take stock of women in tech and gender inequality in the industry. I'm joined by Salam Parikh, CEO of Infosys, which is a signatory for the UN Women's Empowerment Principle. Salam, always good to have you with us. Thanks, Haslinda. Great, great to be here with you. Uh, we know that the pandemic has had a significant impact on women in tech. More are working over time, more have taken on primary responsibilities like childcare, homeschooling, housework. What are you seeing? What are some of your own observations? So first, uh, for us, you know, women uh, at Infosys represent 39% of our workforce. And one of the things we've learned during the last 18 months is the importance of flexibility and making sure that the environment we have allows for all of that. What we've seen really is from the very beginning of when we started the work from home, uh, we quickly had 95% of our employees working at home, and we set up an infrastructure which enabled men and women to work really effortlessly in that fashion. As we've seen the, the 18 months that are rolled by, uh, we've tried to make sure that the work intensity does not overwhelm. The initial weeks and months, I think everyone was working uh, extra. Uh, we've put in place programs which make sure that people are taking breaks, that individuals are focusing on themselves, their families, uh, and of course, their mental well-being. And we've seen tremendous support from our clients in making all of this happen. Uh, so at this stage, we've seen actually the flexibility being much more supportive for women and in general for everyone that needed that uh, in terms of their personal situation. Uh, you talk about that flexibility of working from home. Men can now work from home without the usual stigma attached to it normally. How is this playing out in the various markets where you operate? So they uh, really all around, we've seen uh, everyone benefiting from that after the initial adjustment. Uh, what we see going ahead, we've opened our offices in most parts of the world on a voluntary basis. And we are encouraging people to participate in being in office uh, as they can. Uh, in some instances where clients need and a very small percentage of our work, individuals are working from offices but the vast majority are still working in a remote or flexible manner. Uh, what we've seen is that this has allowed, in fact, productivity to be significantly better in the way people approach things. We've seen, uh, obviously, a significant reduce, reduction in commute times. We've seen people's intensity at their work being high. And I've had discussions with client executives which have led us to further consolidate work with them. Uh, client executives telling me that they've seen Infosys perform delivery, which is above what they've seen with some of our peers. Uh, we talk about the benefits, but the gender gap has also widened in a way. We talk about how women in tech, uh, you know, are nearly twice more likely to lose in jobs compared to the men. How should companies look at hiring uh, to, I guess, bridge that gender gap as economies begin to recover, as companies begin to hire again? How can employers and organizations get it right? So there for hiring, I think uh, our focus and in general, uh, my view is in the tech industry should be really targeted to making sure all potential employees are part of it. Of course, women being a, a significant part of that, but everyone who wants to participate in this flexible way of working. This year, we will recruit 45,000 college graduates, uh, 42,000 in India, 3,000 outside. And our approach is really we are bringing in people from locations where we don't have large 
development centers with the view that they could work flexibly. We are bringing in people who have a, a need to have that uh, flexible work environment. We do see, of course, going ahead, that there will be some increased need to rebuild the social capital, uh, some of which we have used in this past 18 months, uh, as especially newer college graduates join the workforce and for them to remain connected with the situation. So there, uh, I, mm -hmm. I can see more and more of, of that activity uh, coming together. What are some of the norms within the tech industry that really need to be challenged and that's not happening now? So there, uh, in, in terms of what we are putting in place is a work environment that increase sensitivity to the issues uh, of women working in that environment, uh, what are the sorts of areas that need encouragement, and is not just for the benefit of women or, or for guiding women, it's really to sensitize uh, non-women workers in the workforce to make sure that they understand what it's needed to be done, to create an environment which is more warm, more welcoming, more productive for all employees. Hmm. Uh, you talked about targeting 45% of women in your workplace by 2030. How challenging is that? Well, for us, really, it's a huge goal. You know, in the same way that we achieved carbon neutrality uh, in 2020, uh, it's a goal that was uh, something that the company deeply believes in. Uh, I personally believe that that's something we should aspire to. I think we will have challenges, as we've seen in the tech industry over the years. Uh, while we're at 39%, which is a great, goal, a great achievement, we know that we need more things to be done to make sure that more of that comes in. Uh, for us, it's critical to uh, have a, a work environment that brings in women, uh, allows for them to succeed in, in the most effective way in multiple geographies. We also operate in 46 countries, and we want to make sure that all of those countries, we can put this in place. How are you holding your managers accountable for the targets that you have set? So here we are rolling out many of these targets on a progressive basis to all of our leadership teams. Uh, and there are different targets at different uh, locations that we've put in place. Uh, our goal is, that we want to, over time, measure internally and share externally how we are progressing on all of our ESG targets for 2030. We've set up uh, an ambitious agenda for ESG, and one of the most critical elements uh, is the element you refer to in terms of the targets for women. Yeah. Uh, we know that Infosys is hiring more people outside of India than within India itself. How do your strategies differ for the different parts of the world, given the diverse cultures, given the different challenges? So there, j just to uh, share with you, of the 45,000 people, uh, 42,000 will be hired in India from colleges and 3,000 outside. What's changed for us is in many of the markets, we are hiring for the first time now uh, in that scale from college graduates. Uh, what it means is we are looking for all of the measures to make us uh, employers which are driving that change in all of our markets. We are part of the global leading employers in various countries. We are making sure that all of our policies and approaches are something that the employees coming into the workforce today can relate to and can become a part of for the future. One of the key things that we have in place is our training program. We have a training program in any location that you're in, which I believe is the leading training program, and that's hugely attractive for college graduates joining us. Uh, this gets them ready for the new digital technology skills of the future. And we have an online platform with 3,600 courses. We also offer it for free for engineering students. So it's a platform that is used widely around the world. Uh, it's also about trying to get women back into the tech industry. Are there programs to help women restart their careers, for example? 
Absolutely. So we, we have a program which uh, encourages women who've taken some time off to rejoin uh, the company or rejoin the tech industry. We have ways where we can enhance and accelerate how people who join back in can go through from some training uh, to some sort of uh, project assignments, which let uh, women move faster. Th those are programs that we've put in place to make sure that it's easier for women who do uh, choose to take uh, some sort of a, a break in their career to come back and feel uh, exactly where they were and feel part of that same ecosystem. Uh, Salil, women in tech often lament about a bro culture. How are you addressing that at Infosys? Are, are, are you looking at the same problem? So there, uh, one of the points we were discussing a few minutes ago, uh, our approach is to create this environment where, uh, of course, women uh, understand what uh, would be going on within the company, but we also want to make sure that men in the company are sensitized to it, uh, to exactly address that, that there is an environment of openness, there's an environment of understanding different points of view, there's an environment where, for example, in, in sessions, in discussions, in creative areas, in design workshops, that all voices are heard uh, and uh, all opinions are reflected. Uh, these are things that need some sensitization, uh, and we have programs within Infosys to make all of that happen, which gives greater ability for everyone to participate in these uh, client-related activities. I'm curious, though, how much traction you're having in markets like India. So we, we are, I, I feel we're making <clears throat> excuse me, tremendous progress uh, in this area. But as we've said in our 2030 goals for ESG, we have some very uh, strong ambition. And my objective is to really make sure that uh, each year we progress uh, along this way. Uh, today, if you see what we have uh, in terms of our leadership, in terms of the overall percentage, we have a tremendous progress already made. But of course, there's more things we need to do as we go through the next few years. Uh, part of the reason why I ask the question is because it's been tough for India Inc. to achieve gender equality. In fact, India slipped 28 places in the web gender gap index, standing at about 140 out of 156. So not a good place to be. Why is India slipping? And how is this reflected in India Inc.? Well, there, I think, uh, you know, my, my uh, attention and focus is really much more on the tech area and what we are doing within Infosys. Uh, for example, our, our percentage, which is at 39% for women, uh, is two points ahead of where we were uh, at the same time last year uh, and also improving from the year before that. Uh, our focus is essentially to make sure that in the tech world, uh, we create an environment which makes it very welcoming and simple for women to work there and to succeed there. Uh, what, what, what we are always focused on is ensuring that when we see college graduate hiring happening, we put in place something which is equal for everyone to succeed in that. And the fact that we are constantly improving on some of these statistics gives me a lot of positive view that we are on the right path and we will continue to make progress. I want to take it a step further. The COVID-19 recovery will be digital. What would have taken five years for digital adoption took five weeks. How can governments, or rather five months, I mean, how can governments ensure this transformation is inclusive? What policies would help? What role can the private sector play? So there, I think, uh, in a different uh, around the world, in the 46 countries we are operating, different governments have different approaches. What we've learned is the, the fact that uh, the, the uh, you reference the speed of the digital transformation is really benefiting every individual that wants to participate in this new digital world. What, what does that mean? If people are ready to reskill themselves. Uh, you can go faster in the new world. 
Companies like ours, other tech companies, our clients are much more flexible on where individuals can work from. So you combine those two really strong forces, flexibility and reskilling, uh, you can create an environment where everyone can participate. And in my view, it will be tremendously beneficial for women. Now, many governments around the world are creating programs which accelerate reskilling. Uh, we are participating in those programs by providing our own platform uh, in a way that anyone can use it uh, in different countries, different community colleges, uh, different engineering schools, different government agencies are starting to use our platform uh, absolutely free for, of cost. And we see that benefit because you get certification that you can quickly start to work. So we've got to, in my view, take uh, from, a, from a company perspective, take some of these approaches, uh, digital reskilling, uh, flexibility, and make it so that women can benefit from it and we can see more participation in the workforce. Uh, Salil, Infosys seems to have the solutions to counter this gender inequality. Why has it been especially difficult for the tech sector? What is it about tech companies that they're not doing, that they're not achieving the results? Well, I, I think it's, it's the, for, for what we have learned, uh, it's a question of making sure that there's this openness all around and making sure that this is something that is communicated and discussed uh, across the company. My sense is the tech industry is also doing that and it's starting to move. Maybe we need to go faster in some of these other places. What we've learned really is once we set the direction in that sense uh, from the top across the company, we make sure we measure some of these outcomes and we create the environment that allows men and women to appreciate what it means to be in this sort of a joint environment, uh, making it much more open. And that progresses all of these activities. Uh, and my sense is the tech industry is also going in that direction. Uh, of course, uh, I think all, all of us can go faster in that direction. I'm curious, our boards, our tech boards, holding CEOs accountable for gender equality. What are you seeing? What are you hearing in your conversations? So one of the things uh, I've noticed, uh, and especially with our board, is we, we have tremendous focus on this area. In fact, we are one of the first companies in India that have put together a separate committee focused on ESG, giving it similar focus and attention to uh, audit activities or shareholder activities, an ESG committee of the board. We also have a really strong gender participation at our board level. Uh, our lead independent director is a woman, Kiran, who's a fantastic uh, board member. And, and we think, you know, that sort of leadership and that sort of role model uh, helps us, of course, uh, at the board level, but they are also participating and helping us across the company because our employees see that uh, as, as a role model and, and aspire to those sort of roles in the future. Do you see a divergence or a level of acceptance for that matter between East and West? But then my, my sense, again, many of these things are moving uh, in different speeds and uh, within different industries. So you look, for example, today in the tech world, uh, what we are doing is, a, is something that works across 46 countries. So we are not that, uh, let's say, divided between West and East. It's much more how the industry is moving. And I can see that in some other industries as well. Uh, let's say you look at uh, the pharmaceutical industry as one example, and we see a tremendous uh, amount of movement uh, in that industry. W what we are noticing also is ma many, many areas, whether it's in India or other places uh, uh, in the East, are stepping up when they're in the tech world. You see so many new startups which are driven by women, whether it's in Southeast Asia, broader Asia, or of course in India. 
And that also creates this enthusiasm and, and a role model behavior, which helps further push into the tech world.